Welcome to the paint party. My name is Laura and I will be your guide for today's painting, which is a beautiful spring day. So if you would like to invoke the feeling of spring with me, take a look at the description below for all the supplies you'll need, pull up an easel, and let's get painting. We're going to begin with our light blue background. For that background, I need ultramarine blue, titanium white, and my 3 quarter inch flat brush. First, I am going to dip that brush in my water, wipe off a little bit of that excess, dab it on my paper towel. We want our brushes to be wet, but not dripping wet. And then for the background, I am going to pull a little bit of that blue color in with that white color, never minding the exact ratio. But we're going for something fairly light, so perhaps you want to add a lot of white to it. And then once you have a shade that you like, you can go ahead and stick it on your canvas. So I have my flat brush, and I'm going to work in a crisscross X motion. I like to add a little bit of texture to my backgrounds. And as I fill in, every once in a while, I will pick up a little bit of extra white to lighten up some areas. And sometimes I will pick up just a tiny bit extra of that blue. We still want it fairly light, but every once in a while, maybe I want a somewhat darker spot. And as we fill in this background, you may find that the brush starts to get a little scratchy against that canvas. Just take your brush every once in a while, dip it in your water, dab on your paper towel so that it's wet but not dripping wet, and go back and you can brush over what you have, spread out that paint a little bit more, get more use out of that paint, and then when you go to pick up some more paint, don't be afraid to pick up a nice, healthy scoop of paint. And if you look closely at this brush, you'll see I have my paint not entirely mixed. That's okay, because I'm going for a somewhat textured look. If you want a solid shade of blue, mix it together very well and just brush all the way across as you make your way down. As an added option while we are working on the background, if you would like, you may brush the side of that canvas with that light blue paint in order to wrap that color around your canvas. So that is optional, but you have that available to you if you would like to wrap that color around. If you need to remix that blue color along the way, don't worry if it's not the exact same shade that you had previously, especially if you are working on this sort of textured background where perhaps there are subtle differences between the shades of blue throughout your background. If you want to keep it simple though, just do a roughly 50-50 ratio. For every one scoop of blue that you mix in with your white, you have one scoop of white. but subtle variations in color are certainly okay, and I think they make the paintings look a little more interesting. So if you want to smooth out that background, you want to work in long, smooth brush strokes after you get some paint on there, smooth it out. If you want to see more of those individual brush strokes, just do a few quick little strokes in one area and then move to your next section. So 
So keep filling in. We want this whole background covered up. If this is your first time painting today, go ahead, let me know, drop a comment. You could also let me know what other types of paintings you would like to see. If you want to see examples of some of my other artwork, I am on Instagram at tinyartwork. You can check out some of my paintings. Perhaps we can bring some of those to life on this channel here. And now I am getting to the bottom part of my canvas. If you find that your easel is a little bit in the way and it feels sort of awkward reaching that very bottom edge of your canvas, or even if you just want to be able to paint the part that wraps around, you can go ahead and flip your canvas around so the bottom becomes the top and it's easier for you to reach that edge. And there we go, there's our background. If you're still working on it, go ahead, take your time, hit pause on the video if you need to, but when you are done, or if you are done, go ahead, rinse off your brush really well, wipe it, get all that paint water out of there, put it down, set it aside, walk away, let this background dry so that it's all ready to go for our next step. All right, welcome back. My background is dry and ready for the next step. If you're not sure if your background is ready, take a look at it under the light. Move it around. If it has a matte finish, you're good to go. If it has any shiny spots, it may need a little more drying time. But once it's ready, we can go ahead and sketch out our flower. And for that, I'm going to be using a piece of white chalk. So, our flower is in the bottom right corner of the canvas. Although you have creative license, feel free to move it around however you like. You can switch up the colors or even the flower. So I'm going to start in this bottom left corner with the center portion of my flower. So I'm just going to sketch in a nice big oval. And that oval is on the diagonal. Top right, bottom left. cool thing about chalk is that you can easily erase it. So if you need to readjust your drawing while you still have chalk on there, before you commit to the paint, you can take a dry paper towel and just rub off that chalk. So that is the center of the flower. You need to add the petals around it. Don't concern yourself with the number of petals on your flower. You can add however many fit on your particular painting. And we're just doing a basic curved petal shape. This is not meant to represent any one specific flower. So you definitely have creative license to make it look however you like. I'm going to start with one big petal here on this bottom right. Pretend you're going to do another oval 
but then that oval gets cut off by the center oval. And as you make those petals around your flower, they may also be cut off by previous petals. As I make my way to this top left side here, some of those petals are hidden because of the angle that I drew my flower at initially, so those petals are a little bit smaller. They're not entirely in view the way the ones down below are. So we just have smaller little curved lines for that side. And there we go, there is a basic flower shape. You can certainly make adjustments as you like. And the stem is going to come off this bottom right corner. So the size of your stem may depend on how much room you left for yourself down in this corner. I ended up moving my flower over a bit to the right, but if you want to make adjustments, you can always erase and then start over. That's the beauty of using chalk. So go ahead, sketch in those flowers. That's the first part of this step. Okay, so my flower is sketched in. I want to add the stem now, which goes down to the bottom right corner. I'm going to just eyeball the approximate midpoint of this flower and start my stem in that area. Go down towards the bottom right, have it cut off by the page. And this is a fairly large flower, so I want a thicker stem. So I'm going to leave some space here to make a nice thick stem, nice wide stem. And there's also a leaf on the bottom, which is cut off on the bottom edge of the canvas. And it has this nice little wave to it. So really have fun with it. Make a nice little curve on the bottom. Have it come up in the other direction. And then back down, make a nice little wave. It ends in a point. And then goes back down off the canvas. So have fun with that. You can vary up the specific shape however you like. And then we also have the pattern of the bee's flight and the bee itself but we'll worry about our flower first. So I'm going to put down my chalk and move on to my brushes and my paint. So for this next step, I am going to use my quarter inch round brush and white paint. We also want to have some bright chrome yellow and burnt sienna on hand for the petals and the center of our flower. But I'm starting with white. So first, quick dip in my water, little dab on my paper towel. I'm picking up some white paint and I want to roll and wipe off some of that excess. And I'm first just going to trace along this flower. Just trace along that chalk outline. I'm holding my brush like a pencil close to that metal part. Just tracing the chalk. Tracing the center of the flower and the petals.
I'm not yet concerned with the stem or the leaf. And once we have that traced, I am going to fill it in with white. And this is just a base coat, so do not worry about missing little spots or having it be uneven. This is just a base coat. We're going to fill it in again with some yellow. Adding white first will just help that yellow to stand out a little bit more against that blue. And I'll do the center too. There we go, really quick. So you can see it's very streaky. You can see little bits of blue. We just want a base coat to get things started. I'm going to add a little bit of chrome yellow paint. It's a really bright yellow to my palette. And I'm going to use that and white. And I'm going to use that to add our coat of yellow to these petals. Now, if you would like, you can certainly do a different color flower. If you want to do orange, you can mix some red in with your yellow. You can do just plain red. Maybe you want a purple flower and you can mix blue with red. It's up to you. I have some white and I have some yellow. I'm mixing them together, roughly equal parts each. Still using that quarter inch round brush, wipe off some of that excess. And now we are going to fill in these petals and make them look a little more lifelike. So I'm tracing around that curve that I drew, following the direction that the petal is going in, following the contours. Going right up to the center oval. Not concerning myself too much with how it looks on that edge because once we fill in the detail of the center oval, that center will overlap the petals a little bit. So let's get that first coat of yellow on our petals. Don't forget, you may need to periodically wet that brush just to keep that paint nice and fluid so it flows across your canvas. Just make sure if you dip in the water, you dab on your paper towel. And we will do other layers on top of this. So it's still okay at this point if you have a tiny little space in between the petals. And again, it's okay if it looks a little uneven around that center oval. There we go. And now we need to add some shadows and highlights to make these petals look a little more three-dimensional. So I have a dirty brush. I am going to add some burnt sienna to my palette. That's a brown color, kind of a reddish brown. We're going to use this for the center of the flower, but also for little bits of shadow in the inner parts of the petals, closer to the center and wherever the petal is covered up a little bit by another one. So I have my dirty brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that burnt sienna and I'm going to brush along the bottom part of the petal, the part that's closer to this center. And if that petal is behind another one on one side, I'm also going to brush along the side that's meant to be behind 
the other petal. And then if you want to smooth it out a little bit, you can give your brush a quick dip in the water, a quick dab on your paper towel, and just brush over that again very lightly. Smooth out the edge a bit. Now this petal here is in front of both of the petals on either side, so I am just going to add a little bit of shadow towards the center part of the flower. So burnt sienna, my brush is still dirty. I don't have too much of that burnt sienna on here. Just add a little bit down towards the center part of the flower. And then you can give your brush a quick dip, quick dab, go in, smooth it out a little bit, brush over it a little bit more. Depending on how wet that yellow paint is, it may blend into that yellow or it may really stand out if the yellow is dry. Whenever you are blending, it is important that both colors you're blending together are still wet. So if you want this burnt sienna to blend into the yellow a little bit, the yellow needs to be wet. So if you look here, I just added a few brush strokes of burnt sienna in the part of the petal that would have a little bit of shadow. Dipping my brush in my water, I dabbed on the paper towel, and I'm very lightly brushing over it again, smoothing out and thinning out that brown paint a little bit. If I want it to be a little more subtle, and I want it to blend into the yellow part of the petal, and the yellow is dry, I can pick up a little more yellow, perhaps a little more yellow mixed with white, and while that brown is still wet, brush over that brown just a bit. Working that together. The more you brush over an area, the more it's going to smooth out and blend together. So go ahead, add your shadows to all your petals. This little petal here that I did on the top is actually behind two petals, so I need a shadow on both sides and towards the center. Okay, so now we have some shadows on our petals, but we still want to fill it in a little more with some more highlights. Perhaps we want that bright yellow to stand out in a few spots. So we'll continue adding some layers to these petals, and I will do the highlights next. So for the highlights, I need my white paint. I'm still going to use that quarter inch brown brush, and I'm not concerned if it still has some yellow or brown paint on it. We just want to lighten up the parts of the petals that are on top of or in front of the other petals. So this petal right here, for example, is right up front. It's in front of these other two petals behind it. So we need a nice highlight on both sides of that petal. So just swoosh it in. Follow that contour. And you can make these highlights really stand out, really press down, get a lot of white paint on there, make it nice and bold, like that, for example. Or you can make it a little more subtle by taking just a damp brush. You can do a quick dip in the water and a quick dab in your, on your paper towel. And then just go back, smooth it out a bit more, blend it into the yellow a bit. 
So that's up to you. If you want really bold, in-your-face highlights and shadows, you can add your swoosh of that highlight color. You can go back and add more prominent shadows if you like. Or you can make them subtle and while it's still wet, you can take your brush while it's damp and just lightly brush over that shadow or highlight and have it be more subtle. Okay, back to the highlights. So the highlights, white paint, but perhaps it's actually pale yellow or pale brown, depending on what you have left on your brush. There may be some residual paint on there. But we're getting a nice little swoosh of white along the parts of the petals that are more away from the center and also on top of other petals. And now we want this flower to really also stand out. We want a nice bright yellow. So if any of that yellow got a bit dull or lost behind your shadows or highlights, you can go back, pick up just plain chrome yellow on your brush. I cleaned it a bit first and go back and swoosh in some pops of that bright chrome yellow. So at this stage, you may see a bunch of individual brush strokes in those colors. If you like that look, you can keep it and go with it, or you can blend these colors together a little bit better on your petal. So I'll do this one as an example. My yellow is still wet. Perhaps I want to blend that into my highlight a bit more. So let's reintroduce some white. And then I'm just going to take my damp brush and brush over the areas where my yellow and my white come together. Keeping in mind, the more I brush, the more it's going to blend. So you choose how much of those brush strokes do you want to see and how soft do you want it to look. You can keep going back and forth now at this point between all the petals, touching up those highlights and those shadows, making them either more prominent by just adding a little swoosh and moving on, or perhaps making it more subtle by taking the time to blend those individual colors together a bit. And don't forget to follow those curves of those petals you want to paint in the direction that they are growing. So I'm just continuing on filling in these petals, alternating between my base color, my shadow, and my highlight. working that paint with my damp brush when it's still wet in order to blend it together a little bit. And then going back and adding little, little pops of extra white or yellow or brown, wherever I feel like it might need it. Okay, so here we have our petals all filled in with our shadows and our highlights. We want to fill in the center part of this
flower next. We have that center part to fill in and then also a few other little lines in between those petals just to define it a little bit more. So I'm going to continue with my quarter inch round brush, my burnt sienna and my white. And I'm just going to dab that canvas. I'm using the tip of that brush and I'm pressing down, pulling away, press down, pull away in quick succession. A little bit of burnt sienna, pick up a little bit of white, overlap those colors, dab, dab, dab. And fill in that whole center, allowing some of those little brush strokes that you tap in to overlap the petals just a bit. That will clean up this sloppy little edge here. I'll just camouflage it. Alternating between the brown and the white so that it's not just one solid color. And you can see some contrast and see some texture. Now it's pretty much filled in. I'm just going to tap in a little extra burnt sienna around this outer edge. Fill it in a little bit better, make it just a little darker along the edge. Making sure I don't have any space between that center and the petals. And adding a little extra white in the center part for a little added highlight. Still just tapping with the tip of that brush. Okay, so now it's looking a little more like a flower. I am going to rinse this brush off and I am going to switch gears and move to my 1 8 inch round brush. It's my skinny brush. I like to call this one my skinny brush. It's really good for fine details and line work. So rinse off that brush. Get that paint water out of there. and move on to that 1 8 inch round brush. I'm still going to use my burnt sienna. Just wet that brush a bit, dab on my paper towel, pick up a little burnt sienna, and we're doing some line work. So we don't want to dunk and then brush. We want to dip in the water, sorry, dip in the paint, <laughs> roll and then pull on your palette to bring that brush to a point. And I'm going to do a little bit of a line in between each of those petals. I'm not going around all the way. It's just going to help define the petals a little bit more. If that paint's not sliding, you can add just a tiny drop of water to your burnt, uh, burnt sienna. Just to loosen it up a bit. Don't forget you still want to pull and wipe. Make sure that brush is not dripping. I'm steadying my hand on the canvas, being sure not to rust it on any wet part. I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm holding my brush like a pencil by that metal part. If I hold it too far back, it might wobble around. We want control over that brush. So steady your hand on the canvas or on the easel and just trace in between those petals. I'm not going all the way around the whole outline, just a little added line between those petals to help define where those petal breaks are. And then very, very lightly, just want to graze the canvas with the tip of that brush 
add in a few extra little short lines coming out from the centers of those petals and follow the curve as you draw those in. So I'm going very lightly with that brush, very, very lightly, just with the tip of that brush. If you really press down, you'll have a thick line. We want a thin line. So very, very lightly, very gentle pressure. Just a little bit of paint on the tip of that brush. We're just going for an added detail, a little extra shadow there coming from this center portion out towards the ends of the petals, but just short little lines. We're not going all the way, following the curve of each petal as you go. And then once that's done, you can rinse off that brush because we will move on to the stem and the leaf. So for the stem and the leaf, I need some of my phthalo green. That is our base color. We still want to have some white and yellow and blue on hand so that we can make shadows and highlights. But I'm going to begin with my base coat in green paint. Just pick up some green. I'm going to mix in just a touch of white with that green paint just to make it a little more opaque. We'll paint over it again. So don't worry if it comes out much lighter than you intended if you add the white. I have my quarter inch round brush again, wipe off some of the excess, hold it like a pencil, steady myself, and trace that stem. And if you need to, you can certainly rotate that canvas so it's easier for you to reach that stem and just fill that in. Solid green, you can use just plain green, or perhaps you can mix your green with just a touch of white in case that green is a little bit transparent. Adding a bit of white will give, it, uh, give you better coverage. So there we go, there's our stem, but it looks very flat. This is just our base coat. We need some shadow. So I'm going back to my ultramarine blue. I need just a tiny touch of that. And I'm going to mix a little bit of that blue with my green. So I have my dirty brush. I'm picking up a little ultramarine blue, a little bit of my green, and I'm going to mix, 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 mix those together so that I have a darker shade of green wipe off some excess, and that is going to go underneath the petal. Under the petal and on the side of the stem that's closer to the bottom edge. That's where I want my shadow. If there isn't too much difference between your base coat and your shadow, then you may need to get the white paint off your brush. If there was white paint on there, maybe rinse that off first. You may also need to add a little extra blue to your blue and green mix. You can also go back, add in more of that plain green. And then we can't have light without the dark or dark without the light. So I'm going to wipe off my brush quickly and I'm going to mix in some yellow with my thalo green. I'm mixing a bit of yellow with a bit of thalo green so I have a nice light yellow and I'm going to brush that along the other side of my stem and a little bit in the center. And then we want to soften that up and blend it together a little bit. So while everything's still wet, you can Rinse off your brush real quick, wipe it, just go in with a damp brush, and as long as all your greens are still wet, you can brush over them. Long, smooth, continuous brush strokes. 
smooth it out, soften it up, blend the darker colors into the light. You can always reintroduce a color if you need to. If it's dry and it's not blending very well, you can reintroduce that color. Or if you lost sight of a color, perhaps it blended too well and now you just have one solid color again, you can go back. Let's say I want to make this shadow a little darker. I can go back, add a little extra blue down there. You can also add a little touch of white to part of your stem where you want your highlight to be. So while you're filling this in, if you feel like this round brush is not quite doing it for you, you can set that aside and maybe give it a go with a half inch flat brush. Perhaps you'll find it easier to use a flat brush. And you can use this skinny edge to work along the edges or you can turn it flat to fill in wide sections. And the more you fill in and work those shadows and highlights, the more three-dimensional it's going to start to look. So extra blue in the green if you want a shadow, extra yellow with the green if you want more of a highlight, and of course you can always also add a pop of white for a really bright highlight. And there we go, there's our stem, and we're going to use those same colors for the leaf. And you can use the round brush if you like that one, or if you want to try this little flat brush that I have, my half inch flat brush, you can use that, just use that thin edge to do the outline. I'm starting with my phthalo green as a base coat, tracing along that chalk outline, and then filling it in. Solid green to begin with, or maybe green mixed with just a touch of white if you feel like your green needs it. So if you're using a square brush for this step, you can turn it so that we're hitting the canvas with that whole wide flat part as you fill in the larger area and as you get into the skinnier areas or just the outline, you can turn your brush so that you're hitting it with that edge. Okay, so we want a little bit of a shadow in this part here where the leaf dips down and on the underside of the leaf and some highlights on the other sides where it's up higher, these top parts. Pick up a little bit of that blue with a little bit of that green or maybe even just blue if you have enough green left on your brush. Add in a few brush strokes of blue in that part that dips down a bit and on the underside of the leaf. Go for some yellow with that green to add the highlights to the top parts of those leaves. And now I'm just rinsing my brush real quick, wiping on my paper towel. It's still a little dirty, but I got some residual paint off. And I'm going in and smoothing it all out. Light brush strokes very lightly. Go over it again if we need to. Follow those curves.
and there's our flower. So you can go ahead, take a step back, take a look, see if you need to touch up any spots, if you want some highlights to be a little more prominent, maybe you can add a little extra pop of white here or there, or if you want a shadow to be more prominent on the stem or the leaf, maybe you can add an extra little swoosh of that ultramarine blue or ultramarine blue mixed with the green. Or you could add a little extra burnt sienna where you want some shadows on the petals. But go ahead, touch up your painting, take your time. The next step will be to add the little path for the bee and the bee itself. Okay, so now it's time to add the path of the bee and the bee itself, and I'm going to begin with my white chalk. So the bee path starts up on the top left, it loops around and then curves in towards that flower. You can make that path as big and loopy or as simple and straightforward as you like. I like to have a little fun with it. I'm just going to make a nice curved line here. And of course also how big and loopy you make it may depend on how much space you left for yourself. So let's see. There we go. And when we fill this in, we're going to do this as a dashed line. So there's the path for my B, and I'll do the B right about here. So think one big oval for the body and a small round circle for the head. You want the B to be in the direction of this curved pattern. Remember, you can use a dry paper towel if you need to make adjustments. Okay, so there's my B flight pattern and the B. I didn't worry about the wings or other little details. I just want a basic guide for this. So let's start with the path because that's fairly straightforward. I am going to use my skinny brush and some white paint. I have some clean paint water so if your paint water is all muddied up from previous steps you can hit pause real quick, go get some fresh paint water and come on back. I have some clean water here, my skinny brush and white paint. Let's get a clean pile of white paint here. Of course, you can do this in a different color if you prefer. Get some white paint on that brush, roll your brush and pull to wipe off the excess, and trace along that path, but make it a dashed line. So press down, follow it for a bit, pick up your brush, make a little space and trace over the next part of the path and continue on around until the end. So I'm not tracing this entire chalk outline, I'm leaving little spaces. After it's dry, we can go back and erase that little bit of chalk that we have in between those dashes that we painted. So right now I just did it really quick, but you want to wait until that's dry because then you can really go over the whole thing and make sure you erase all of that chalk. Just make sure the painting is dry first. So if you press down, you'll have a nice thick line. Even though it's a small brush, really press down, make that line kind of thick if you like. Okay, so there's my path, and now I want to fill in my B. So I'm going to continue with my skinny brush. I'm going to mix my white paint with my yellow paint to make a nice, bright, 
yellow paint. And I actually want to start with a lot of white and a little bit of yellow so that it's really bright and it stands out against that blue. Add a drop of water to that paint if you need to, if it's been sitting a while, just to loosen it up a bit. And then don't forget to roll and wipe off the excess, make sure it's not dripping, and trace that B. Tracing that outline. I'm still using my skinny brush. If you are comfortable or if your B is big enough, you can use the larger round brush. But we're tracing and we're filling in. So I'm keeping my hand steady on the edge of the easel as I fill this in. And I'm holding my brush close to the bristles. So there's the body of the bee. And now I'm going to do the head, which I think I made a little big, so I'm going to adjust the size of it as I trace. Fill that in. Make sure my yellow is mixed with my white. We can go over this with another coat if you want that yellow to be a little more prominent. But adding a lot of white for your first coat will help it to stand out against the blue. Okay, there we go. And we can still see some chalk outline here by the head of the bee. And I also have the chalk between those dashed lines. I'm waiting until this is totally dry before I brush it off. So I have my first coat on the bee. Let's just smooth it out a bit. I want to make that yellow a little more prominent. So I'm going in now with just plain yellow, not mixed with white. I'm going to give it another coat. I'm following the curve of that body. So we're just doing another coat here to make that yellow a little bit brighter, a little darker. And I want the bee to look a little bit like it's round. So while that's still a little bit wet, I'm just going to take a little tiny touch of the burnt sienna, just like we did with the flower. I'm going to mix that with a little bit of that yellow. So I just have a hint of burnt sienna in with the yellow. And I'm going to brush along the outer edge of my bee, pulling in towards the center, following the curve of the body. So we started with the yellow and white mixed together, added another coat of just the yellow, and now we're adding some shadow to the sides of the body and the head by adding a little bit of burnt sienna to the yellow. So I'm working from that outer edge of the body, the outer edge of the head, working my way towards the center, going across the body towards the center, and following the curves. And the center part of the head and the body will be a little brighter, so I'm going back to some white and some yellow to brighten it up a little bit in the center. And all this will really come together once we outline it and we get the stripes and the wings and the little antenna and the stinger. So if this part is a little tricky, don't worry. Once we get the other stuff on there, it's going to look like a bee and it's going to bring the whole painting together. So at this point, we just want our bee body and head to dry so that we can add the outline and the wings and other details without smudging anything. So go ahead, rinse your brush, put it down, or do any other little touch-ups, 
but let that be dry before coming back for the next step. Okay, my B is dry, so we are ready to go ahead and get those last little details on there. So for the next step, I need my super skinny 1 8 inch round brush and black paint. I'll also need some white for the wings, but let's worry about the black first. So we're doing a small area, we just need a little bit of black paint on our palette. And we're doing line work, so we are going to hold our brushes like pencils. Just use the tip of that brush and steady ourselves on the canvas or the edge of the easel. My bristles are a little bit wet. I am mixing just a teeny little bit of water in with that black paint. Not enough to make it drip. Just want to loosen it up. Roll and wipe off some of that excess. Bring that to a point. Steady yourself on the canvas and trace along the body and the head. And I'm going in one continuous brush stroke. If I run out of paint, I'm still going to go, continue on to finish that loop, and then you can trace over it again if you need to. And then I'll trace the head, never minding the chalk that's still there. We'll get that when the painting is dry. So I've outlined the body, I've outlined the head, now I want to add some stripes. And this is not an anatomically correct bee necessarily, we just want the idea of a bee, so go ahead, add some stripes. So I'm going to thicken up the, this top part of the head here. I'm going to thicken up this area where the head meets the body make a stripe going down the middle of the head and I'm following those curves. Anything that's right of this center part of my oval will curve towards the right. Anything to the left of it will curve towards the left. You'll get as many stripes as, you know, make sense for your bee. go we have some stripes and now I want a little stinger and some antenna so the stinger is just a skinny triangular shape coming out of the back end of that V so think like a really long skinny V or triangle and then fill that in and the antenna come out of the head and curve to the left and the right and there's a little curly cue at the end there so just with the tip of that brush, curve it up and out into the right and curl it in. And same on the other side, but in the other direction. And there we go. So now we want to add in the wings and the wings are white, but they're a little bit watered down. And we also want this black paint to be dry. So make sure that it's dry first check for shiny spots, let it sit and dry for a minute if you need to, and then we'll do the wings. Okay, so my B is dry. I'm going to add in the wings, which are white paint, but they're a bit watered down. We want those wings to look a little see-through, so make sure you have some clean white paint. This is a smaller area, so I would still recommend using that skinny, skinny 1 8 inch brush. I'm picking up a little bit of paint there and I'm going to add a little drop of water to it. Don't worry if your water is tinted a bit, although if it does concern you, you can certainly swap it out. I'm adding a bit of water to this little pile here, just a few drops to thin it out. And now I have some on my brush. I'm going to dip in the water again real quick, dab on my paper towel, so I still have some paint on here, but it's fairly watered out, and I'm going to make petal shapes with my wings. So I have two on each side, overlapping each other. So let's make one petal shape, or almond shape. And 
and then fill that in with that watery paint. You should see a little hint of blue from the sky behind it and a little hint of the bee's body as well. So the wings start off really subtle, but then once we outline them, they'll be a little more prominent. So now I want to add a second wing on this side, same side as the first one. Think almond shape, but it's behind this one. I'm going to make this curve here on the left, have it come down to the body and have it next to, next to but behind the other one. A little bit of that watered down white paint. If it's not watery enough, dip in the water, dab on your paper towel so it's nice and watery but it won't drip. Brush in that wing. Thin coat of paint. This is where we actually want a thin coat. We want to see a little hint of the bee's body. So now I'm going to mirror that on the other side. I still have my skinny brush, my watered down white paint, and I'm going to do a set of wings on the other side. Pointed side of the almond shape on the body, rounded side off the body in the sky. Fill it in. Since your paint is watery, you want to make sure you dab on the paper towel so it doesn't drip all over the place. It should be see-through. There we go, and I'll do my second wing on that side. Coming up on the home stretch. There we go, I have my wings in there. It's a small detail, but once I outline them, they will really stand out. This is dry at this point, so I can show you. Once your busy bee path is dry, you can erase those chalk bits, and now you have a nice dashed line for the path. Okay. And while I did that, my wings were drying, so I'm going in to my skinny brush and my black paint, and I'm going to trace along the outline of those wings, keeping in mind that one wing is in front of the other. So, black paint on the tip of my little skinny 1 8 inch brush, holding it like a pencil, steadying my hand on that canvas or edge of the easel, and tracing along the outline. If you run out of paint when you go, you can just wet that brush a little bit, dab on your paper towel, pick up a little more paint, roll, wipe off the excess, trace over it again. I think I need to flip this so it's a little easier for me. There we go. So keep in mind if you want a very, very subtle wing, just go very lightly with that brush. You'll have a thin brush stroke. But if you like a bold outline, you can press down a little more firmly, make that outline a little bit thicker. So here you can see the difference between really pressing down, we're just going very lightly. And that is the final detail based on our reference photo. So if you step with me, give yourself a little round of applause or a little pat on the back for a job well done. Thank you for hanging out with me. I would love to see your versions of these. Remember, I'm at Tiny Artwork on Instagram, so feel free to tag me or maybe use hashtag 
Laura Rose Paints so I can find your masterpiece and see your beautiful paintings. But don't forget there is one more step and that is to sign your name. So take that skinny brush with your favorite color or whichever one will stand out against that background, initial or sign, the bottom corner, or maybe even use a Sharpie and write your name on the side or the back of the canvas. That also works. I hope you join me again and until then, happy painting.